Dr. Maimuna Kadiri. Dr. Maimuna Yusuf Kadiri, popularly referred to as the celebrity shrink, and I know that she is, is a multiple award-winning neuropsychiatrist with mental health and mental health advocate with almost 20 years experience. She's a physician, psychiatrist, psychologist, psychotherapist, author, public health advocate, movie producer, proficient coach, public speaker, parent, and a philanthropist. Yay. She is the medical director and psychiatrist in chief at Pinnacle Medical Services, Nigeria's leading and foremost psychology and mental health clinic, prominent in the management and treatment of a wide range of psychological, emotional, and behavioral related disorders. As a forerunner in the practice of mental health and other novel therapy techniques in Nigeria, she continues to be the most sought after psychiatrist and psychotherapist in Nigeria and beyond. Dr. Maimuna is a Goldman Sachs scholar on entrepreneurial management of the Pan-Atlantic University, a Vital Voices Fellow and Ashoka Changemaker, Tony Elumelu Foundation alumna, certified social sector manager, a global thought leader. She has been recognized locally and globally. She's also an alumna of the US State Department's International Visitors Leadership Program, IVLP 2017, and she, she's an Aspen Fellow 2021. Awesome. Dr. Maimuna is an expert trainer on stress and stress management for individuals and organizations. She contributes to articles published in magazines and newspapers, is a recognized transformational speaker, innovator, mentor, and mother of three children. She's a member of several professional and social organizations, locally and internationally. Join me as we welcome Dr. Maimuna Kadri to share her thoughts on the single mother and her mental health. Dr. Kadri, you are welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be here. I'm in the midst of a major training and um, I, I, with the topic and of course, um, the people involved, being mothers, being sisters. I know I, I, I just can't do anything just to squeeze myself in. Once again, I'm glad to be here. I did everything possible just to make sure that I meet this group. So let's give the grand rolling. And I'm happy we still have at least 71 people on board, including myself. So what is it about the single motherhood? I want to quickly let the mothers know, you, the word woman, is a well-organized man. Take it away from it. W-O-M-A-N, you are a well-organized man. For the fact that you are a single mother does not make you less of who you are, and you shouldn't feel guilty for whatever circumstance that made you to be in this group. It can be so dicing, and the fact that vulnerability risk factors could be higher with you because you are a natural nurturer. The social role you play in the society is, is enormous. And of course, the patriarchal system, we can't take it away. That alone is enough to lead to so much emotional issues. But one thing I want you to understand is that you are enough. You matter. You are awesome. You are the father, you are the mother, you do everything and the society still wants you to keep a smiling face. You are standing in the gap for your children. Even if you don't have biological ones, a lot of us think that we must have our children for you to be a mother. We are murdering a lot of people that are not our biological children because of you are that woman. So you have to tell yourself that you are enough. You don't need to seek validation from anybody. So I'm going to leave us with two, three acronyms today. Why? Because that is the only way you will remember Dr. May and remember that she said X, Y, Z. I don't want to beat around the bush because there's so much we can say on this platform and little you can take away. So what are these things? that I want you to learn about. Rule number one, know yourself. Wake up every morning 
knowing who you are. Awful times we do not know who we are. So we start looking for people that will know us or like us. You have to ask yourself, do I even like myself? Are you in a relationship with yourself? Are you befriending yourself? But some of us are not. You are not in a relationship with yourself. You are not befriending yourself and you want people to befriend you and be in a relationship with you. So for every morning you wake up, these four things, you have to start doing them from today because Dr. May said so. First, how am I feeling? Call your name. My name is Memuna. Memuna, how am I feeling? If you are fine, no problem. I dare can't be. That is a Nigerian slogan. Secondly, if you are not feeling fine, go to the next question. What am I feeling? As a single mom, there's so much you are dealing with. Emotionally, psychologically, physically, spiritually, everything is on you. What are you feeling? Need on board that emotion, anger, bitterness, resentment, overwhelm, frustration. Need it on board these emotions that you are feeling. It could be one. Go to the third question. Why am I feeling this way? Could be anything. You are expecting some money. The money didn't come yet. No. Find out why you are feeling that way. Last but not the least, how can I get out of this situation? Trust me, what you do not know, you cannot resolve it. Once you ask yourself these four questions on a daily basis, even somebody sees you outside and says, you are stupid. You know you are not stupid because you've asked yourself. You are in a relationship with yourself. You are befriending yourself. So nobody can tell you that you are stupid. And you, 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 you tell yourself you are stupid. It helps to boost your self-worth, self-confidence, self-esteem. So these four questions are very generic for you. How am I feeling? What am I feeling? Why am I feeling this way? How can I get out of this? Why you do that on a day-to-day -day basis? We do understand that 90% of the reason why you visit a doctor, you go to the pharmacies, you go to the alpha, is because you are stressed. How many of us know what our stress factor is? Today, I'm going to enlighten you on your stress factor, the str ESS. -S. What is my stress factor? What is my S? What is my T? What is my R? What is my E? What is my second S? What is my last S? It could be one thing that is stressing you out and it's just causing a volcanic eruption in your whole life. So your first, knowing your stress factor, the first S is yourself. Self. Sometimes some of us are the ones causing stress for ourselves. Everybody is doing well except me. Everybody is, you go to social media, a lot of audio. People are posting their 2019 pictures in 2021. And you think that they are in Turkey, they are in Dubai. Nigerians are never allowed to come to Dubai except you do one or two things. I know that. And you are thinking everybody is doing well except you. The negative self-talks, pessimistic views about life. You are your issue. The fear of missing out. You think it's only within the millennials and Generation Z? There is adult pressure out there. My friend bought a Mercedes Benz. It's not about buying a Mercedes Benz as issue. It's maintenance. If you buy your own, can you maintain it? So the first S is self. What is T? T is trauma. We've all been traumatized. When I came on board, I, I, I saw the foundation talking about trauma. Trauma collectively right now, everybody is traumatized because of COVID-19. But we know what there's something what we call secondary re-traumatization. Lagosians became more traumatized than every other person when NSAS came on board. And of course, some people might have dealt with some other issues that they didn't find closure. I remember sitting down with an 80-year-old woman who was depressed, and she said the, she, she, the children couldn't understand why the woman was depressed because she was a billionaire. Her children are doing very well. She said, I was 12 years old when I was raped. For 68 years, that woman didn't forget that, forgive that man. She became depressed. None of her children married from that tribe because she made it so. And the children never knew why they couldn't marry from that tribe. So trauma 
formed the basis of a lot of issues that we are dealing with. What are you traumatized about? Have you found closure? Have you healed? Because our healing and recovery is a personal journey. T is trauma. This is where most of us lie, the R relationships. Eight out of 10 women that are in psychiatric hospital, yeah, but where I did my residency is due to relationship issues. I started my medical practice almost 10 years ago. I thought the, the, the narrative would change. It hasn't changed. Nine, eight, no, nine out of the women that come to my hospital is still due to relationship issues. That is why I said, are you in relationship with yourself? Are you befriending yourself? Because you have to know what it feels like before you can, you know, know what somebody, what you need from somebody. You can't give what you don't have. A major stressor in our life is the R, which is relationship. You are a natural nurturer. Even if you are not a mother, you are murdering a lot of other people. They are expecting so much from you. A lot of we women, we will give every other person except us. You need to understand that you first, it's not selfishness, it's called self-preservation. So the R is relationship issues. The E is economic and financial. I don't know about you. <laughs> the prices of goods and services in the market now. You 100,000 is baby like 10,000 Naira. If you send somebody to the market, the person did not steal your money. Go yourself. I went to the market with 50,000 one day. I was holding Lilo bag. I said, who stole my money? I said, I came home, I said, do you know that? I don't know what I bought, this 50,000. I said, mommy, sorry. Oh. So economic financial crisis is a major issue. So for we single mothers, we also have to start telling ourselves, our children before they get married, there are certain things we have to sit down to analyze. Finances is a major problem in our homes. And a lot of, we, we, they expect so much from men but the truth is that we women, we are doing the, the real thing. And when you are doing the real thing, nobody is going to tell you, tell, tell you thank you. Try, you, the thing is that even those people that have husbands, go out with your husband, people are greeting your husband as if you are not there. That is why I said, you as a woman, the W-O-M-A-N is a well-organized man. Take it, very important, very thankless service. You do everything. How many women want to go to bed by 8 p.m. and go to bed exactly 8 p.m. You are checking the door whether it is well locked. You are thinking about tomorrow's breakfast, the children's room, the this. By the time you want to go to bed, it is 10 p.m. And science has told us that women need more sleep than men because of the activities that we do. How many of us are sleeping well? So the E is economic and financial. The second S is sickness. It may not be you that is sick. It may be your friend. It may be your, your child. It may be your, your aged parents. And once those people are affected, it somehow affects you too. And that is... is why you can be stressed and really nobody automatically nobody is helping you nobody is supporting you you are the father you are the mother the last s and not the, you see that you see that last s this is where most of us fall in school and work check when they were when we we're doing remote working I remember one day my children, I didn't want to wake up. I was just too tired. There is no light. The internet is not working. Mom, I said, there is a dad in this house. What do you people mean? Stop calling my name. Stop, I, I, I will go crazy. Oh. So you need to understand that school and work can be a major system. Especially as a single mom, you are everything. Some mothers I know that are single mom, their fathers are living. They are like spam donors. They have moved on. So you are the father, you are the mother. So imagine you working and of course, making sure that your children go to school because you don't want the same calamity that has happened to you to happen to, to your children. So you must know your S-T-R-E-S-S, -S, which is know your stress factor. Now that you have known it, what do you do? That is where my second acronym also comes from. It's called self-care. Like I said earlier on, Self-care is self-preservation and not selfishness. A lot of times, 
go, just one day go out and come into your home and look at everything in your home, well organized, children looking robust, your nanny looking good, uh, the driver looking good. Now go to the mirror and look at yourself. Are you looking good? We do things for every other person except us. You should change yourself. You cannot give what you do not have, dear sister. You must be able to be intentional and deliberate about what you want in life. And you have to continuously abide to those things. So self-care is one acronym I want to leave with us before I round up. What is S? It's self-awareness. Like I said on the stress, if you are not aware of your triggers, your stressors, you can't manage it. What you don't, what you don't know, you can't manage. And if you are not able to manage yourself, the society is ready to mismanage you. So you have to begin to start knowing how to manage yourself. And sometimes your stressors are the people around you. The people in your inner circle must be people that their head, they dear. I mean, it's not people that are there for, this, for, for the good times because there are people that are there for a reason and people that are there for a season. Some of us mistake it for people that are there for a reason and leave those that are there for a season. You are rich, you are a minister, you are a governor's wife, you are this, you are this. They are there for a season. And once that season goes, they go. Stop mistaking them for the people that are there for a reason. Let them go. Your inner circle must be built with people that are there to cheer you up when you are up there. And when you are down there, they are able to pull you up. If people in your inner circle do no longer, do, do no longer serve you, feel free to fumigate them out and be unapologetic about it. Fumigate is allowed. It is allowed. Fumigate. Because they no longer serve you. They were there for a, a season. The season has gone. Hamatan has finished. It is now uh, um, hot weather. And you want to keep them. No. Fumigate them to the middle and outer circle. That is the S. E is exercise. Dear mothers, don't look at the truth that as if people that are exercising want to lose weight. No. Your heart will be thankful to you. 30, 45 minutes. That's what the WHO, the WHO has said. So you do that exercise regularly. When you exercise regularly, it boosts your feel-good hormones, what we call endorphins. And when the body releases endorphins, you are able to... ...manage so important you exercise olympics has ended the people i saw the names on this list now you didn't make our list you were not there you were not preparing for any olympics or commonwealth games so please your 30 45 minutes on a daily basis through three to four times a week do it the earlier is limit exposure to excessive news and social media I said excessive. I did not say you shouldn't go to news and social media. Excessive. It is your phone. It is your data. It is your money. Uninstall the apps that no longer serve you. If you're in a group that no longer serve you, Memuna exited the group. Mm -hmm. I've exited. This group no longer serve me. As I exit, I will delete the group. Fake news kills faster than COVID-19. You need to know that. Throughout today, as I got off from my bed, I said the only online I will go to is Facebook because I want to just put one. I have not been to any other social media platform until night when I'm done with my training. Twitter, since the Twitter ban, I've had peace of mind. Let there be, because the people on Twitter, children of anger, they have caught. They have judge and jury there. You think you are, you will, mama, you will not go there and go and be saying such. They will drag you. They can drag Donald Trump. Who are you? They will not drag. So limit exposure to excessive news and social media to help you manage your stress. The earth is fine and engage in pleasurable activities. What are those things that you are doing before that you are no longer doing? During COVID, I formed a garden in my house. I have three children. One, I say, We'll be watering the watermelon, uh, water leaf. If it dies, you know what will happen. Make sure you make sure you do not show that water leaf to, 
to, to, to life. One, I gave one a uh, bitter leaf that I planted, one for poor leaf. Everybody is making sure now that their own is well nurtured. You, you give their homework. Children want to give you wahala. You give them, ah, you are a mother. <laughs> you cannot give me stress in this house. We are in it together. Find and engage in those pleasurable activities that will relax you. If it's knitting, if it is, no, no, do something that will help you. This is connect. Connect with the right set of people. Not everybody is your friend. You are not Niger Jollof rice. Neither are you chocolate. This one doesn't like me. That one doesn't like me. Are you Jollof rice or one bed Jollof rice? What is it? You don't need it. Connect with the right people that are in, that will take you to where you want to belong. Sometimes we are going to leave friends behind because they are not in tandem to, in your pursuit for greatness, they are not there. They want you to remain where you want, where they, where they want you to be. Refuse. Take yourself out of that equation. But you know what? Connecting with the right set of people is good for you. You can't live in silos. You're not an island. You need, we are social animals. The A is ask for help. Asking for help is a sign of strength and never a sign of weakness. Never a sign of weakness. Sorosoke, we heard it during the SS, and we thought it's for the millennials and Gen Z. We, the mothers, we also need to Sorosoke. I like the fact that mothers talk, they cry out. They ask for help, but ask for more help is very important. The R here is rest and sleep. Mother, stop giving excuses. I don't have time. I wasn't able to sleep. There is no award, no accolades for the busiest person on earth. Stop mistaking business for productivity. You want to buy phone, you will go to the market. Meanwhile, Jumia is there. Uh, you, uh, what, what about those uh, uh, conga is there? Where you can order, they'll bring to, the, uh, to your house with POS. You will pay, you will, you will swipe your card. Then you want to go to the market because it will be cheaper. Have you thought of the way and tea of the body? I don't know about people in Abuja, but in Lagos, Lagos is the third most stressful city to live in the world. Number one and two is Afghanistan and uh, Afghanistan and Iraq. We don't have war in Lagos, we have traffic war. I don't stress myself anyhow. And if you are the type bringing stress to me for what match, I will direct you to where I don't want you. Our friend block i don't see this life is only one life is short but death is sure when you understand that you know that you have to manage yourself in ways that you have to to live right the e last but not the least even covid made it possible eating right you have to eat right not only to boost immunity to also help you get rejuvenated so once you know your s-t-r-e-s-s Practice S E L F C A R E. Self care. Self care, like I keep saying, it is not selfishness, it's self preservation. So, for you, dear sister, understand that if you don't take care of yourself, you are going to burn out. And when you burn out, you'll be useless to yourself and you'll be useless to others. So, you have to make sure that you are emotionally bankable. When you go to the bank, what do you do? You deposit or you withdraw. So what are you depositing in your emotional bank? Adequate hours of sleep, proper exercise, eating right, having the right people in your, right, in the, in your, in your inner circle, connecting with the right set of people. Those are the things you are depositing. So when you need it, you can easily withdraw. There are some days you, you have two hours out of 24 hours to sleep, but there are some days you have the whole 24 hours to sleep, but your your Fear of missing out will not allow you to rest. Hey, this person, if I don't go there, hey, it will not work. Who said when you die, if you've ever gone for any burial, then let us sit, let us do one minute silence. It's never one minute, bro. 30 seconds. Amen. Amen. Everybody have moved. We that we are Muslims, you know what it is. You die in the morning after uh, as you prayer. Highest, ah, you have been buried. So just leave all these things. Like I said, life is short but death is sure. So as I round up, sisters, you are enough. You are amazing. You are awesome. 
You do not need any validation from anybody. You matter. Because at the end of the day, if you don't take care of yourself, who will? And if it is not now, then when? Thank you very much. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Memuna. <laughs> So this is the first time that I am listening to you directly. I've attended a program that you came for in Abuja and it's always such an honor. Yes, everybody's giving a standing ovation. This was a good way to close it today. We're so grateful. We're so, so grateful. Thank you very much. And thank you. I do. I remember that at that particular event, you were also rushing to the airport to leave to Benin or something like that. So I know that your life is extremely busy it's great to hear these points i've just been writing thank you very much uh, we'll go to the questions i don't know how long you will be with us but i'll just run through um maybe i should just give you two questions if you don't mind dr memuna um so that you can just answer i mean we have so many questions some of them i know cannot be answered here but i think that we can we can start the conversation so one of the one of the questions which i think is very key is why is depression one of the most common and popular mental health issues? Because as psychiatrists and psychologists, this is right down your alley. So in your practice, why is in our society, why is depression one of the most common? We can't- Very good, very, very good question, I must say, right? The thing is that all over in the world, there are three common, the three commonest mental illnesses are anxiety, depression, and what we call mood disorders. Mood disorder, that's where depression falls in. So it's not just like, um, it's only depression. Sometimes people may have what we call bipolar. So why are people even more depressed than you know, other people. We also have to understand that a lot of times people also use the word interchangeably, thinking that they are depressed. They are sad. So please, if you are in this group today and you so use the word, I think I'm depressed. Sister, you are not depressed. You are sad. Nobody has diagnosed with obesity. Depression is not a sweet word. Depression is not a nice word to use. Because when you understand what depression does to the system, you know that you, you shouldn't even go into that. Don't say, I'm sad because my alert didn't come. And uh, somebody is annoying me. You are not depressed. Please know that. Because depression comes with those signs and symptoms. Sadness that must be up to two, two weeks, low energy, and of course. So let's go to why it is it is more common. Do you know even being in Nigeria is a risk factor? It's not that WHO has not yet put it in that diagnostic criteria. Me, self, I'm looking at WHO with corner eye. Now, don't you, can you not see the suffer head that is happening to us? Sapa wants to kill us. Many people are, are jacked out of the country. Being in Nigeria is a risk factor. Where are the roads? Where's the electricity? Where are the good schools? Where are the hospitals? Everybody's doing out of pocket payment. NHS is not properly covered. HMOs are not even covering mental health. There's so much that we are facing. But again, you have to look at predisposing factors and the triggers. Coming from a home where there was domestic violence is a risk factor. Coming from a home where there was a death of one or both parents is a risk factor. Coming from a dysfunctional family setting, child sexual abuse, family history of mental illness. These are some of the things we call adverse childhood experiences. A lot of times as a child, they are not within your control. In fact, they're not even within your control. But of course, now let's now look at the triggers or environmental factors, distress, S-T-R-E-S-S. -S. So these are some of the things that are now brewing a lot of cases of depression. I don't want to go into the anatomical or medical aspect of the serotonin and dopamine. Let's not go there because not everybody on this platform goes. But these are some of the things that we can relate to. But you see the word a lot of times people even misuse it. That's why the fact that we have a high number of people that are depressed. In fact, studies are now even telling us one out of every five Nigerians is currently depressed. And the reason why the, the theme for the year, mental health in an unequal world, was, is, is, a, is, a, is a topic or the theme for the year is that 75 to 95% of people that are living with mental illnesses are in low and 
middle income countries like Nigeria, but access to care is not there. Quality services, medication, those are the things. You no, know? so when you talk about depression and you look at the risk factors, vulnerability uh, risk factors, predisposing and the triggers, which is the X, uh, stress factor I talked about, is on the increase. With COVID-19, it is now more. A lot of things have changed. Increase in prices of goods, remote working, homeschooling, the isolation process. So this is one thing that everybody needs to understand. Because when you understand that, you start knowing what to do and how to manage. And I like the fact that Nim Foundation talked about seeking for help. For example, when I talk about self-care, if it, uh, you've done all those and it doesn't work, there's counseling and therapy. There's medication. Not everybody that has a mental illness must take medication. Is this a myth? Counseling therapy is the first rule. Sometimes people may go for admission, especially maybe you're having severe case of depression or substance abuse or whatever. But whatever goes for you, stick to it. Because they're all under non-communicable diseases like hypertension and diabetes. But why do we sympathize with those people and stigmatize people with mental illness? It's a big question for us to answer. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Kadiri. My second question for you, and after this, I'm going to, I'm going to release you to go. I'd like <laughs> to, you. I'd like you to, you know, I work with women predominantly in my practice. And so I hear their stories and they're so similar. I didn't know until I started practicing. And one of the things I hear a lot is the inability to move on. Women want to fix the past. Mm. And it leads to regret, guilt, shame. We feel that we can fix, we, we don't want to agree that it has happened, whatever it is. And we want to fix the past. Can you say something in advice to people who are living in regret? Maybe I could have done something else. Maybe I shouldn't have left. Maybe, 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 you know, those and questions. that is what is killing us. Yes. That is what is killing us. Women, you are not a rehabilitation center. You need to know that. You are not a rehabilitation center. What are you fixing? A grown ass man? For what? We need to let it go. Don't be a rehabilitation center. Somebody can only be fixed if it comes from here. As far as your brain, you are already formed as an adult. You can only be fixed if you, the person, has made up his or her mind to be fixed. You can't fix. That is why it is easier, cheaper, healthier to nurture a healthy child than to fix a damaged adult. It is cheaper. Do it now. Stop fixing a damaged adult. It doesn't work that way. It is not in within your control. If you like, fast and pray. Kabash, it is okay. But if the person is ready to change, Nothing gonna happen. Nothing. You are not a rehabilitation center. Let me reemphasize it. They don't. Do you know what? Every morning we all wake up. We are carrying emotional baggages. People will come and dump it on you. You to you receive. Instead of receiving those baggages, receive sense, sisters. Receive sense. Let everybody carry their baggages as they brought it. Let them be going. You have two hands. Your hands are already occupied. Why are you carrying people's emotional baggages? All these ones that we are we have to fix it. Oh, guilt tripping yourself. Stop guilt tripping yourself. I said earlier, one of the first sentences I made when I came here, you are enough. You are a well-organized man. God has given you everything you need to prosper, to grow. Look at going inside you. Think about it. If I ask this simple question now that we ask you in our evaluation, who are you? A lot of people will tell me what they are, not who they are. Discover your true self what you want, your inner skills, what you can upskill, what you can do, rather than trying to be a rehabilitation center. The more you guilt trip yourself, the, the easier to get depressed. Because women are twice more depressed than men. Know the statistics. And half of all mental illnesses start before the age of 14 to third before the age of 24. That is why even when your child comes to tell you, mom, I think I'm depressed, listen. 
Listen not judgmentally and stop listening to respond to your child. Listen to that child non judgmentally because children get depressed, children get suicidal, children die. I've just authored a book three, three months ago. Three months ago, deep expression. We've seen 23 teenagers in my center, depressed, suicidal. Some of them have even attempted suicide twice. I'm not selling my book here, but if you think you need to read something about depression, go and get deep expression. It will challenge you as a parent to start asking those questions that you need to ask yourself and ask your children. Children get depressed. I know if a nine-year-old who killed himself. So please, let's begin to start listening non-judgmentally to our children and stop telling them, do you know the school you are you paid 10 million and you have a roof over your head, you have this, you have that, but go, go. They know. They just want you to listen, not to respond, but to understand. Thank you, dear mommies and sisters. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you. thank you so much we're so honored enjoy the rest of your training thank and uh, we'll continue and we'll send the recordings out to everybody okay. thank, thank you, you so very much, much everyone thank, thank you very you. much everyone have a lovely day god bless us awesome all. awesome thank you thank you so much <laughs>